Hello everyone, how you doing? Today we've got a review of Food Girls 2 Civil War. Now this has been out on PC for a couple of years now, but this week it is coming to the Nintendo Switch. So I thought I would let our resident expert Mirin take a look at it and give us a review for you guys. These are his words, not mine. Please go follow him on Twitter with the link in the description. Let's see what he thinks of Food Girls 2 Civil War. Mixing gameplay and visual novel isn't the newest and most original idea. It has been done multiple times with all sorts of genres from action to strategy and even mahjong. But regardless, it's something that plenty appreciate as reading for hours upon hours might not be the definition of fun for some. Our game today, Food Girls 2 Civil War, tries to combine a restaurant management sim with a VN. But are the results good enough or did this game need a bit more time to cook? In Food Girl Civil War, you once again play as a professional consultant helping promote the street market. At the start, you meet Coco and Long R, who are slightly upset after a new competitor joined the fray, gaining a lot of attention. The newcomer is a renowned beef noodle restaurant run by a couple of twins called Ching and Hong. As Coco and Long R go to greet the sisters, things quickly get heated up and Hong challenges the girls to a contest. They will compete for popularity, and after a couple of months, the loser will have to close up shop and leave the market. To make things a little spicier, right after the fight, you receive a call for a new consultancy job, and the client happens to be none other than the twins. It's up to you to decide which side of the battle you want to choose. Well, sort of. Weirdly enough, the game locks the twins' side of the story until you clear the game at least once with Lung R and Coco. I find it a slightly baffling choice, mostly because I thought their route was more engaging and better structured. Fortunately, clearing the game won't take too much time since one single run will last over two hours. As for the story itself, it's just, it's kind of there. First of all, while it's not completely necessary to play the first game to understand what's going on, the game does assume that you've already done so. There's quite a few returning characters from the predecessor who the game spends no time whatsoever presenting to you, which can leave you somewhat confused if you don't know who they are. But then again, even the ones that are actually new to this game are almost forced onto you with little to no build up as well. This lack of depth in personality is far more noticeable in the secondary characters whose chemistry with the main group feels rather superficial. Besides that, the story from each route is not particularly complex either. Admittedly, they do have some amusing scenes here and there, but its attempts at drama or mystery fall mostly flat due to the game's short runtime. It's for this reason that I felt the twins' route was the more compelling one. Unlike Long R and Coco's side of the story, the sisters share the same route and same events, so those two hours are properly used to better flesh out their narrative. It's still not what I would call gripping stuff, but there's enough in there to motivate one to see it through to its conclusion. At the end of the day, the story in Food Girls 2 feels more like a tool to occasionally break the repetition from the gameplay loop rather than being the game's main appeal. Speaking of which, let's talk about Food Girls 2's gameplay mechanics. The game gives you a time limit of two months to win the competition, which might seem stressful for some, but in reality it's fairly easy to keep up. Plus you have multiple difficulty options to choose, so you really don't have to worry even if you've never played a single simulation game before. Every day you get four action points that you can spend however you please, but your options aren't exactly numerous. Basically, you first choose whichever girl you want to focus on and then pick between chit-chatting with them to gain their affection, distributing flyers to increase popularity or working on improving the quality of the food. Popularity and the quality of the food are the two stats that will make you earn more money, whereas affection is needed to unlock new story events. With your money, you can also buy items to further boost your profits and gain the upper hand. Just keep in mind that each week, you'll need to pay the rent. Fail to do so, and it's game over. All of these systems are visually conveyed clearly enough that you will only need an in-game day or two to fully understand how it all works. It's really basic stuff, perhaps overly so, but the short length of each day alongside the simple pleasure of seeing your numbers go up is more than enough to make the gameplay loop enjoyable. However, 
As engaging as it may be, the gameplay design does hurt the game's overall replayability. In short, during the story events from time to time, you will be given choices to make that will affect which ending you get, just like most visual novels, which means that you can unconsciously lock yourself out of the best ending if you pick the wrong one, and there's no way to either know when that has happened or way to go back unless you load an old save. This is of course common in the genre, the issue here is that once you load the save, you will naturally need to do all the management sim parts all over again. What's odd is that this could have been solved without much effort as the game does allow you to replay any previously seen events, except that when going back to those events you are locked into whichever choices you picked on that run. I feel it would have been quite easy to let the player change their choices and reset the flowchart without having to replay the whole management portion, especially considering that the gameplay parts and the story parts are isolated from each other. If you don't mind not getting the greatest ending, this shouldn't be too much of an issue, but if you want to see every single ending, this repetitiousness can become a little bit frustrating. Regarding the game's presentation, I feel it's a bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, the CGs look for the most part quite good, and the live 2D animation used on some sprites is really nice, even if some of their gestures are slightly exaggerated. However, not all sprites are animated, and the sprites reused from the first game are clearly of lower quality when compared to the newer ones. That, and the fact that not every character is voiced, can lead to some bizarre moments with a mishmash of animated and static sprites, voiced and unvoiced characters, all of them appearing in the same messy scene. It's haphazard, but I can forgive that since it's clear that this isn't a high-budgeted visual novel. What I find harder to forgive is the state of the translation. I was checking the Japanese text and comparing it to the English translation, I found some of the choice of words and tense usage to be a little bit questionable, not to mention that very often names would appear in Chinese, and I also saw a couple of lines that were left completely untranslated. They are by no means game breaking or anything, but considering that this game came out on PC more than two years ago, they've had more than enough time to fix them, and yet here we are. It is worth noting that this is the PC version that we're reviewing. The Switch version coming up may have seen improvements since it is being handled by an actual proper publisher rather than the developers of the game, so we'll have to see about that. Speaking of which, if you want to pick this up physically on the Switch, then check the links below in the description and the pinned comment. This is only available physically in Japan, but it does have English on the cartridge, so it's perfect for importing if you like things physically. It also helps support VN Paradise as well, so thank you ever so much in advance. It's also going to be available digitally, but I think just like the original game on the Switch, probably only on the Japanese eShop too, despite it having English. I don't think they'll put this on the Western eShops. If you need some Japanese eShop credits, then fill your boots with the links below as well. So, overall, I know this review has been quite critical towards the game, but I do want to emphasize that the management simulator portion of the game, as simplistic as it might be, is really enjoyable, addictive even. It's easy to lose yourself playing it and fall into a nice rhythm of improving your profits while having the occasional fluffy slice of life scene with your girls. This incorporation of gameplay, alongside its shortest runtime, make this a fairly approachable title for people who aren't that used to the genre. It is, however, when you start to compare it to its visual novel peers where the cracks begin to show, as its story is a run-of-the-mill affair through and through with barely anything remarkable. In addition, I found that the state of the translation to be rather disappointing. I'm well aware that not everyone shares the same standards on this topic, but I feel it's something worth bringing up and taking into account. If you can overlook those issues and enjoy what the game has to offer, primarily as a management simulator aspect, what you will find is an easy to swallow, if slightly tasteless experience that is decent for what it is, but probably nothing worthy of a chef's kiss. A 5.5 out of 10. Alright, many thanks to Miriam for writing this review for us. Go check him out on Twitter with the link in the description. If you want a more critical eye on the genre, then he is your man to go to. If you want to pick it up physically, then consider using the links below to support us. And you can also get the digital eShop credits as well that helps us ever so much. Plus, watching all the way through helps us too. The longer you watch, the more YouTube is more likely to, you know, share us around to new people. So if you're one of those legends who watched to the end, then leave me an emoji of your favorite food. Please check out some of our other content that we've got, some reviews of Paradise Killer, Radical Dreamers, plus a big week for VNs on the Switch if you check that video out too. We'll see you guys over there. Have a good one.